Hey there, welcome to Authentically Raw. I'm your host, Jamie Darris. Tess Jewel Larson, welcome to the Authentically Raw podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Jamie, for having me here. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely. I, I'm really excited for this conversation because you are a stress and burnout coach. And I don't know one person that doesn't deal with stress. And not that all stress is bad, but you know, there's good stress, there's bad stress, but we all have it. Doesn't mean we all know how to manage it and use it for us and not against us, you know, use it for our advantage and know when, you know, stress could be causing us a problem, which to me leads us down the road of burnout. And there's so many different kinds of burnout. And I think people have a hard time figuring out how to bounce back from burnout and we feel it when we're in it. And yet I think sometimes we don't understand oh, this is, this is burnout. And then to go backwards and really kind of dissect and pinpoint where it's coming from, because we're so busy trying to keep going, like I'll relax then, or, you know, get through it and things like that. So that is something I really kind of want to dive into with our conversation today. I would love for you just to elaborate on a little bit more, you know, who you are, what you do. And then I have a couple questions about what led you to become a stress and burnout coach. And I know you have a story behind it. So I take do. It right there. <laughs> um, yeah. So my name is Tess Trollerson, as you said. Um, I am originally from Oregon, although if everyone listening is like, your accent is not Oregonian, what? Um, I've not lived there in a really long time. Um, I live in northern Spain, so at the north coast of, of Spain. Um, I've been here for almost 15 years. Um, and I actually grew up in Barcelona. Um, so I have been out of like American speaking land for uh, a good chunk of my life. I've been and and my husband is English. So um, <laughs> Um, all of these different accents have like, <clears throat> we'll say destroyed, I say perfected uh, my my English accent. Um, but uh, yeah, so I live in Northern Spain and I work with uh, women, professionals, entrepreneurs, juggling it allers, I like to call because lots of times that's what we do, right? Especially as women, we're trying to do all these different things. And we get to the point that we get exhausted and overwhelmed. And so my role is to be a supportive guide and resource to help um, women get and feel more balanced, more balanced in their body, more balanced intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, and through that thrive, no matter what comes their way. You know, there's things that can knock us back a bit, but then, you know, give you the tools that you can go back to to say, okay, yeah, I've been knocked down. How can I get back up again? Absolutely. First, I want to comment on Spain. I am, oof, it's on my bucket list. I can't, I want to go to Spain. And my immediate thought when you said, you know, that you live in Spain, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I could be burnt out there or stressed, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> from experience, you can. <laughs> but you live there, you're immersed there, so it'd be different. But I think if I were on vacation there, I would be pretty at ease, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, I want to first start because one thing I do want to point out, because not every person that experiences burnout is necessarily this, you know, diving into corporate America, you know, they're not in corporate America, oh, or no. they're entrepreneurs, or, you know, I mean, burnout can hit us anyway. And I, and I know you hit on that, you know, I mean, there's the emotional side and the spiritual side. I mean, just it's life catches up and how do we juggle it all? How do we juggle our relationships, whether we do have a professional life or not? And, you know, I think everybody works, whether you work out of the home, in the home, even if you're retired, you're working, right? You're, you're gardening, you're taking care of each other or other people. I mean, we're all we're all like these busy bees in this world. We're working at Definitely. something to achieve and accomplish something on a daily basis, whether that's just staying alive, right? And it doesn't have to be these huge, ginormous things in our life. It can just be the daily, 
the daily stuff. It's the, the chores catching up, you know, the appliances breaking, the taxiing people, the caregiving, you know, whatever we do can catch up with us and just cause so much burnout. And oh, totally. I'm interested in your burnout story. I know a lot about it, but if not a lot about it, but I know of it, I would like to know more about it. Could you tell our listeners, you know, your burnout story and how it led you to the work that you're doing right now? Yeah. So I want to touch back first on what you said, like burnout doesn't come from the big stuff. It comes from the little things over and over and over again. And it comes from being disconnected from yourself and not understanding or not taking the time to notice, not listening. Um, and when we become disconnected, it's it's very difficult to to see how things are affecting us, whether this is emotional, whether this is physical. And that leads straight into my story because <laughs> that's what happened to me. <laughs> Um, I was working as a teacher, um, which, as you said, like, it's not just corporate, like teachers, healthcare workers, a lot of healthcare workers, whether they're, you know, in more of allopathic medicine or more maybe um, holistic medicine, like healers in general, like are often people that um, have burnout, right? Um, moms, like that, maybe they're stay at home moms, like they're still, as you say, they're still working, you know, and so like we have to open this up to lots of a, a sphere of everyone, right? It's totally possible for everyone to become overwhelmed by the stressors that they have in their life. These stressors don't have to be big. They can be very small. It's the way that we um, work with them or don't work with them, right? And we're, we're pushing them away or we're like kind of building up walls to keep ourselves away from them. That That's where it that's where it has this issue because we're not releasing the stress. So in my own story, as I said, I was a teacher, um, still a teacher, just in a very different <laughs> way, um, no longer teaching English. Um, and I, I just completely got disconnected from what I was doing. Some of that stemmed from the fact that I wasn't doing something that I loved. And so I was just like, well, I'm going to block that part out. Um, and then I just started blocking other things out. Um, but that doesn't, you you can do a job that you love and still burn out. So I don't want that to be like a factor that would just was my factor, right? That doesn't have to be everyone's factor. Um, and, you know, uh, over years, like this wasn't an immediate thing. It was over years. I just completely lost touch with what my needs were, what I, you know, how I felt physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, and, and like, it, you know, th there were things throughout this journey that I, I started noticing, like I started noticing I was being a little bit more negative. I am not naturally a negative person. I'm a very like happy go lucky sort of person, but I was not that happy go lucky person anymore. And that was taking a toll on my like my view of myself my own self-worth it was taking a toll on my relationship with my husband it's taking a toll on the relationship I had with my family and my friends I was like cutting people out because I was building so many of these walls inside of me right I didn't want to touch any of that so I was just pushing everything away and then the more I pushed that you know those feelings or emotions or discomfort whatever it was away I started pushing everything everyone away mm -hmm. um and when COVID hit uh, obviously that was like huge for everyone, big stressor. Um, and at the beginning actually, um, so in Spain we were fully shut down. We couldn't leave the, like, we couldn't leave our tiny flat for, uh, like three months, um, other than to go shopping or to take out the trash. That was it. Like we couldn't go out for walks. We couldn't do anything. And we live in the middle of the city. Um, so that, wasn't possible just to like sneak out like not at all the police were completely monitoring like it was intense um but we were able to create kind of a little oasis for ourselves we um had a little kitten at the time and she just brought a lot of joy and light we are super fortunate we have an outdoor space like a little terrace well a decent sized terrace that I turned into a little garden <laughs> um and um so in many ways that wasn't that bad it was after 
when I started going back to work, um, working um, partially online, partially in the classroom, um, masks, um, just the, the tension that people, you know, the fear that people had. Um, my husband caught COVID and then from that I caught COVID. This was before the vaccines came out and um, he was incredibly ill. Um, he ended up getting long COVID um, and I, I just pushed through it. I made sure I was taking care of him. I literally was putting myself on the floor. Like we do not have a lot of space in, in, in our flat. So like we couldn't fully, you know, right. separate ourselves. So I, I would literally just put myself on the floor while he had the sofa so he could be comfortable. So he could, you know, I would be making the food. I would be working. I would be doing all these things. Um, I was still working when I had COVID I, I, because I could do it online. So my boss was like, oh, okay, you can go online. And I was like, yeah, sure, fine. You know, we needed the money because my husband was um, on furlough. He couldn't work. Um, and so, you know, I was like, right, I'm just going to keep pushing and pushing, 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 pushing until it got to the point where I, I uh, herniated a disc in the, my back. I couldn't move. Um, and I was just having so many panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Like it, like, this is something that's like uh, anxiety has been an issue for me since I was very little. Um, but like over the last, like the, these like several years, like every so often, like I'd get, like, they were becoming more common. Um, it's something that, you know, in high school, university, I'd kind of worked through and thought I was a fine. And then it was coming back again. And then with that onslaught of like going back into work of like all these other things, my body failing me, mentally, I was failing me like I uh, failing me, right? Like I wasn't, I wasn't working the way I wanted to be working. Um, mm -hmm. And that was also causing the issue because I was judging that, right? Like, why can't I keep pushing? Why can't I keep going? Why am I falling apart? Like I need to be stronger. And mm -hmm. it, <laughs> I realized, um, Tess, y y being stronger isn't about like keep pushing being stronger is admitting that you need to stop you need to take a break you need to ask for help um and so i did and i ended up actually quitting my job because i was like you know what i can't i can't do this anymore um and i have you know a wonderful family and the privilege of mm -hmm. i was able to quit my job yeah um and so kind of backtracking to 2019, I had gone to India. I'd studied um, yoga in India. I studied to become a yoga teacher in India. Um, but that had never, I, I did it for me. I did it because like, you know, I, I liked yoga. I wanted to, to delve into my practice a little bit more. But then I realized throughout this sort of, when I got to this point that I was like, no, I need to do something more. I realized that, yes, I was doing a practice of yoga, but it was more of like, just the movement through it, it wasn't actually like yoga really is a very, um, you know, yes, there's physical aspects, but there's intellectual aspects, there's emotional aspects, there's spiritual aspects, right? And I was not getting into those other aspects. I was just doing the other because that was what was safe, right? Because it didn't, I didn't have to touch into my emotion, which was all being bottled up and being pushed down. And then all of a sudden it was just like this volcano, right? And everything was just coming out. And, um, I was realizing that I, I really, I needed to, you know, to get that help and support. So I reached out to the wonderful teachers. Uh, one of the best things that could have happened with COVID is it opened up the doors to connect with people from all around the world um, mm -hmm. that I didn't realize that that was available. I mean, I think it was before to some extent, but it was way more available after. Um, and so I started studying. I started studying how to um, get my body back, how to like, help myself emotionally and mentally um and through that process um as i said i quit my job so i started teaching yoga um say on the side it was technically quote unquote my full-time job but a lot of my full-time job was like helping me um and so like i i was sharing these things that i was learning um because at this point right like i was not able to do a lot of physical movement that I could have I was able to do before so I was also relearning 
you know, what that meant as a yoga teacher, right? Like I couldn't get into postures. I still can't get into postures that I could before because my body right now is just not, it's it's not allowed, right? It, or it's not allowed, it's not available. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, part of my practice was realizing that's okay. Yeah. Like it's okay to not be able to do things that I was able to do in the past. It's okay to have a slower practice. It's okay to tune in and really to start listening to what my body needs, right? Um, I'm a very pit that person, I'm very fiery, I'm very like type A, like, you know, yeah. go, 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 go. And um, it's not always easy for me to take a break, <laughs> to sit down and just chill. And that was something I needed to to teach myself is like, you can, and it's okay. And you're not lazy for doing that, right? Like, you're actually really benefiting your whole being. Um, and I started sharing these things, as you know, as I said, with with others, and, and they were really connecting with with that. Um, and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, okay. And then they started bringing it into their own life. And it was working for them. So then they shared it to other people. And then, you know, it, it was like this ripple effect. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. And so from that, I decided, okay, you know, I need to, I need to get a little bit more training. So I started, uh, I did my mindfulness coaching training. Um, from there, been working in somatic healing, yoga therapy. Um, so I'm really able to, a support myself in my own journey because burnout isn't like an every you know it's not just okay you're done and then you're you're move past like it's a progression right and because there's lots of things that build up and depending on what's going on in your life you know you might not be doing the same things like or the all the things that you really should be doing you might just start disconnecting from yourself and so it's that practice of coming back in and and taking that time to reconnect with yourself to ask yourself you know what do i need today what can i give do to give back to myself mm -hmm. um and doing that on a consistent basis and so you know with the work that i'm the training that i have and the work that i do i really i think it's it's beautiful because I'm able to look at a person, not just through one aspect, but through many different aspects and see, you know, how, how are you holding this in your body? Um, how is it, you know, what, you know, and help guide the person to, to explore what that means to them and what emotions are there, what um, judgments might be there. How can we start to, to release this? What are things that we can bring into our daily life? Little tiny things that, can make these shifts so that we're not holding all of these little stressors one on top of the other on top of the other and we're not just continuing to push them down we're allowing ourselves to release them um on a consistent basis right not just like okay i'm gonna go for like a week holiday in the bahamas tune mm -hmm. out completely and then i go back to work and i go straight back in right like it's how can we fit this in in an accessible and supportive way that we can all you know do it it's not just like being okay you have the privilege to do that like we can all do little things and they don't have to take a lot of time it can be a couple of minutes it can be even be a few seconds even just a few seconds of tuning in and grounding can mm -hmm. make such a difference to how we respond rather than react to a situation and how we start releasing whatever it is from the body we're not holding it in right exactly oh you touched on so much and i I had a, a lot, I have a lot, I kind of jotted down. I'm going to throw it all out there and then I'm going to go back <laughs> and start out. But so many of the little things I want to comment on are the just dis, being disconnected with yourself. So I'm going to do a talk a lot about that one. But then, um, you know, just the self-compassion and kindness. If we are experience, experiencing burnout, that took me a while for that really to click. It is because... Yeah. I am not being, you know, self-compassionate or having compassion for myself and I'm not being kind for to myself. So I'm, we're mm -hmm. going to talk about that. And then just the anxiety that plays with it and that mindset that can also go along with the burnout a lot. And that is that mindset of, to me, like you pointed out, it's, it's that lazy thing. Like if I, so many people that are burnt out, they have that mentality that if I'm not constantly doing, going, achieving, I'm lazy. They might yeah. not even necessarily think that in their head, but subconsciously they can't, they can't sit still. And yeah. there's, there's, there's some conditioning and reasoning behind that. 
And I think so often kind of going back, um, and we are going to talk about the yoga and the somatic healing and things like that, because that is a fabulous way to finally get back and get connected with yourself. But speaking on being disconnected with yourself, I, I, I think that it's so easy with the way just society in general and the lifestyles that so many of us leave just constantly on the go and being so busy and everywhere being bombarded with these messages of, you know, even the just like the go big or go home, the do more. And even if you're looking at social media, what everybody is, it's not even just what they're accomplishing at work. It's look at their family gatherings, look at what they're creating in their kitchen, look at my flower garden, look at my, my she shed I just built in the backyard. Or I mean, all of these things that are awesome <laughs> that's available at our fingertips to explore whatever we're interested in. And however, there's that part of it too, that I don't care if you're a teenager looking at this stuff or you're well into adulthood, it's hard to really stay connected with yourself and ask yourself, what is it that really interests me? What do I really want what what am i doing this for because yeah. when we are burnt out it it's hard for it sometimes to click that i am doing a lot of things that number one i don't need to be doing i don't want to be doing i'm doing for the wrong reason with an impure motive um, I'm, I'm doing it to try to prove something mm -hmm. or, you know, earn something, whether that could just be, you know, the approval of someone else or like, like what is really going on? And I know, I mean, I've struggled with burnout a lot. <laughs> and when I really stopped and started to ask myself, you know, where is this coming from? Because no a week long vacation or just sitting down and resting more, you know, doing whatever. It's not just rest and relaxation that, you know, we think we need to cure this burnout. It's something much deeper. It's, it's getting yeah. connected with ourselves to figure out why am I burning the candle at both ends? Why am I, you know, trying to do this? What am I really trying to accomplish? What's going on inside of me that is basically, it's that self-sabotage of why am I running myself ragged? And mm -hmm. until we really, really stop and connect with ourselves, I don't think you can get out of that cycle of burnout. No matter if you're just, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave work an hour earlier, or I'm going to say no to doing that, you know, for this person or, and not that those small changes don't help. They do. But if you don't understand your why behind why, <laughs> like what's causing all of this burnout, yeah. I don't think all those little, um, you know, self-care or whatever, you know, you want to call it, those things aren't going to be effective until you really connect with yourself and look at your life and figure out, okay, what is causing all the burnout and what's behind my drive for having to do all of this stuff, whether it's physical stuff or it's showing up for other people, even just emotionally, um, whatever yeah. it is. And I think, and, and it kind of even, you know, I love how you, you mentioned your full-time job was helping you and like your yoga was almost like the part-time thing of reconnecting with yourself. And it's not like, okay, if everybody just does yoga, they're going to reconnect with yourself. There's a million different ways out there. Oh, but totally. one thing I do love is that through the yoga, it does help you connect with your body in your feelings, because so many of us ignore that. Mm -hmm. um, so going kind of back, because I do want to talk a little bit about the self-compassion and the kindness um, and, you know, the mindset that is behind the burnout. But let's start with 
that being disconnected and maybe this you know goes down the road if you if you choose to go down the road of, of yoga and somatic healing which is you know the feeling part but how does someone number one know if they are disconnected with themselves and number two how on earth do you begin that process of reconnecting with yourself um i i think i mean i think there's there's lots of different ways to realize that you're disconnected from yourself um one one way would be you know you know how, do you ask yourself how you're feeling mm -hmm. um and if you do ask yourself how you're feeling can you actually respond to it yeah you know like so many of us have a very limited um vocabulary of what emotion is arising mm -hmm. um and so just just noticing what whatever it is and and yeah. sitting with it and being aware with it you know of it and and allowing it emotion yeah. is it can be really scary because there's lots of you know different things happening in our lives different traumas we might have had that you know we we're like no we don't want to touch that um, and just a little note, like if it's scary, please reach out to someone and get support, whether that, you know, is from a therapist, a friend, um, coach, somebody, you know, like, please, please, please don't think that you have to do this alone. Um, but, you know, start to, to, as you were saying, like, start to have that self-study, like, how am I feeling? What's arising for me? Um, and then you know another way could be do you notice how you're breathing yeah. um you know it's just these, these little things but our breath can tell us so much about how we're feeling mm -hmm. right like our breath is connected to our yeah. nervous system um mm -hmm. our inhale is connected to the sympathetic nervous system so our fight flight freeze tendon befriend so if you're inhaling a lot and there's short inhales and there lots of times you know it'll be mainly in the chest right it's because your body is in this nervous system response, which isn't a bad thing. It goes into this response because it loves you. All right. So we don't want to like be like, oh, I'm in that response. Ah, no, yeah. like, okay, <laughs> like it's okay. Like just acknowledge that you're there. It's it's fine. Our emotions, when we acknowledge them, they don't usually last very long. The issue is when we acknowledge them and we ruminate on them over and over and over again, and then start to let it take a, take it off or when we push them away right yeah. that's when they get stuck in the body and they get stuck physically in the body they get stuck mm -hmm. in our cells they get stuck in the way that our um our our hormones are being released they get stuck in the you know our posture so you know just taking time to notice how are you breathing um, if your, you know, inhale is easy and your exhale is easy, um, if you're, you know, allowing movement in the torso, um, mm -hmm. sometimes just a shift in how we breathe can completely change the way that we re respond to a situation. Um, but breath is sometimes also not the easiest thing to go straight into, right? Because it can be scary and it can be, feel very uncomfortable from personal experience. Um, <laughs> um, when I first started started my journey uh, with like meditation and yoga was when I was in in high school and um, because I was having issues with anxiety and so my mom got me very you know lovingly got me this um, tape of meditations um yes I said tape <laughs> <laughs> um and um and you know I started listening to them and they would just like, I started hyperventilating because she was like, breathe in, breathe out. I was like, can't yeah. do this. And it just freaked me out. So like, if paying attention to your breath is scary, don't go straight there, right? Just like notice, like, how are you feeling in your body? Notice where your shoulders are. Like, are your shoulders really lifted to the ears? Are you really gripping in the abdomen? Are you tight in the jaw? So it's like these little tiny things that we can start to look at just to bring awareness to our physical body, bring awareness to what emotions might be arising. So if you're noticing that, and this goes into the somatic healing, but like if you're noticing that 
you know, you have a lot of tension in the chest, in the shoulders, mm -hmm. ask yourself, um, you know, what is there any thought that is a, that's part of that? Like, are you holding any thought there? And then the next step would be, you know, are you is is does that thought have an emotion attached to it? Does that emotion have a judgment attached to it, right? And it's it's this self study. It's a, and it's slow progress, right? This is not something that we like do in one day and then, as I said, then you're done and over with, right? Like these things keep coming up and they're patterns that we hold. They're, um, you know, it's 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 things that we have to slowly work through, and we need to make sure that we stay within our window of tolerance and you know the sphere of of comfort because when we start pushing ourselves out that's when we can send ourselves back even more right so that's why it's beneficial to work with someone that can help guide you because they they can help create that safe space for you that you can start to work through these things right when they did think, I answer that question you did <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's that being connected with yourself is like you said, it's just starting to be aware of what's going on in our body. Like, geez, I'm, I'm holding my breath or taking shallow breaths or, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, gripping the steering wheel or, you know, when I'm on the phone with this person, I'm just, I'm tense, I'm whatever, but just starting to be aware of things just helps you kind of connect with, with yourself. And I think it's so easy to just ignore all of that stuff all mm. of the time. You know, when it just so builds and it creates just so much stress. And when you talked like about the, you know, the, our nervous system and the flight, fright, freeze. And I think that so many of us, it's like, that is a natural response when something happens, you know, for us to deal with right, right then and there, you know, say you're driving and, you know, someone pulls out in front of you and it scares you and you have to slam on the brakes or whatever. I mean, what happens in your body well, that response was I slammed on the brakes to keep us safe, right? Okay, so yeah. you keep driving though, and then you're supposed to recover from that feeling. Yeah. And I feel like so many of us live in that heightened state in our nervous system all the time. So many. That stress yeah. and the anxiety, and it is, it's it's become it, it's because of just our daily our daily lives, and not ever stopping right then, and even just realizing in the moment, say with a car pulling out in front of you, like, whoa, that scared me. Yeah. But okay, I slammed on the brakes, everything's fine. I'm gonna take a few deep breaths and whew, I'm gonna slow down and then you slowly recover. So how many things throughout your day that happen, big or small, you just keep trudging through and ignoring the way you feel and yeah. the way you think about it and it just builds and you're you're living in that state all the time. And once you slow down <laughs> and just, okay. And that is, that is just connecting with yourself and being aware like, whoa, that just got me fired up or that made me angry or that really, you know, that was a punch in the gut. Um, you know, I, I feel sad. I feel just humiliated. I mean, whatever it is and just really, it's kind of like that awareness, but it's that ownership owning, okay, this is how I feel. And it's okay to feel that way. Cause this is what happened. But now what am I going to do with it? So I can kind of work through it and release it because I think yeah. so much of this burnout comes from, it's like, we just don't, we don't know how to release things because we don't stop. <laughs> we don't pause to actually do that. Yeah. I mean, at some point you have to, it's that just, that ownership, uh, you know, too, of this burnout, it's not everything outside there because how many people, I'm sure you see this with your clients, how many people, well, when I get all the kids off to college or when so-and-so comes back from maternity leave, then I won't have yeah. so much work or when I don't have to take care of this or when that happens, I'm sorry, all of that out stuff, stuff, side stuff is, is never going to, going to go away. There's always going to be something you can't yeah. it's not when everything else goes away outside then i won't have the stress then i won't feel burnt out if you are doing that you will live with constant anxiety stress and you will always feel burnt out it has to be yeah. the changes you make inside first oh totally totally and you know that that anxiety and stress also leads to other illnesses right like most of our modern day illnesses stem from being in this constant stress mode um 
you know, whether that's IBS and not that there's other things that can't be involved, of course, but, you know, it's a huge factor in it. IBS, um, uh, heart issues, heart disease, um, mental health issues like anxiety, depression, you know, there's, there's lots of, of things. Um, yeah. Chronic heart pain. Disease. I mean, heart, yeah. Heart disease from, I mean, that's a lot on your heart. Oh, <laughs> Digestive yes. issues, autoimmune diseases, tons of them are exactly amplified by not like, being connected not to releasing your and releasing so yes. true so true yeah so i did yeah. um i wanted to hit on real quick though the self compassion and the kindness yes i think that is yeah. is huge because slowing down and being kinder to ourselves and having that self compassion and it a lot of it stems from i mean it's just caring for ourselves in the way we talk to ourselves um you know i i the, the being lazy thing is like one thing out of out of a million but how often i feel like our inner critic <laughs> has a lot to do with our burnout it's like if i if i don't juggle you know a million balls then you know i'm just i'm not i'm not good enough i have to do this i have to do this i have to i mean talk a little bit about how having self compassion and and kindness for yourself helped helped you with your burnout yeah yeah so um Self, self compassion and kindness it, it the, it's the way that you talk to yourself right it's the way that like before i would you know as i said like i would just be like gosh why can't you just keep pushing why can't you just keep doing this you know you're you're failing um and if you notice i, I said it you know this these are things i'm still yeah, working on like i'm not my harder. Harder. <laughs> i stopped right. myself too and i was like no no i, I hear what i'm saying and I, let's take a step back right but it's um and, and and they're not easy to change right it's it's not like it's you know but it, it's just little things it's it's changing how you're talking to yourself so instead of talking yourself down you know think about yourself as your best friend how would you talk to your best friend in that situation right like can you say that in a nicer way you don't have to just completely brush over it like don't let's not like toxic positivity if i it you know but like you know ignore, like, yes okay this is a shit situation excuse me can i can i swear on here sorry this is a shit situation you know um as you mentioned earlier you got into that that car um you know and someone swerved in front of you you know like oh, okay i need to pull back i need to you know and then you could keep going and go my gosh why did that person do that like how could have i you know how could I be stupid enough to get in that position? Like, how could they blah, 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 take a step back. Okay. Right. Like, um, that's what happened. How, you know, how can I keep myself, continue to keep myself safe? Well, I can continue to, you know, pay attention to my surroundings. I can take a deep breath. I can start to relax. Right. And, and it's just these, it's these little shifts in how we are talking internally. Um, and it's also when we do take these steps and like, like I did earlier, I'm failing uh okay i'm i took that i said that fine i'm gonna forgive myself for saying that because that's that it happened right mm -hmm. and i'm gonna say okay i have this whatever it is you know maybe it's a limiting belief that's coming up i feel lacking i feel incomplete about something i'm mm -hmm. um, you're human <laughs> we all have these things right so so okay i i feel that way all right I'm going to forgive myself for feeling that way. And then I'm going to start to reframe it. And I'm going to start to work on how can I, you know, do this slightly differently. You were talking about, you know, the, the ego and how it steps in and blah, blah, blah. Like ask, ask that inner critic to, to be, you know, your cheerleader, you know, so you don't have to push it away. We don't want to push it away. The ego is part of us, but we can change its role. Right. And, and it's, it's a progression. It's, you know, it's taking these small steps. You know, we're saying all these things now, if you're listening, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't do any of that. Like literally one little thing at a time, you know, right. with, with the speaking to yourself, you know, um, just notice, just start to notice. Yeah. Right? Without judgment. Don't Without judge judgment. Yourself. Because that's the thing. I mean, we all exactly. have an inner critic and you don't need to then criticize yourself. See, I'm always talking to myself so horribly. Exactly. I think yes. the one thing that just popped up for me too is, and 
oh my gosh, women do this all the time is it's the comparison. We think everybody else has it all together. You know, she has, you know, this huge high profile job. She's got 12 kids. She's got this house she takes care of. She's, you know, look at her. She looks, you know, she's got the perfect body. This blah, 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 blah. She has no problems. Why can't I do it? Why can't I keep up? It's so not true. And I yeah. cannot tell you, I mean, how many conversations have you been in with women when they just, well, if she can, it's like, it's this, that's part of your inner critic. Like, oh, they have it all together. And why can't you have it all together? And just noticing and being like, okay, there she is again. There's my inner critic. They don't mm -hmm. have it all together. They have their struggles. They are dealing with stuff too. It could be the same exactly. as you. It could be entirely different. And chances are they're looking at you and pinpointing something of they have that all together. Why can't I be together like them? Like just noticing and don't judge yourself, but just noticing, okay, I'm doing it again. I'm comparing myself to them. And, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I think this is where the kindness and compassion sets in because I've started to do this too, is when I notice it, just be like, okay. It, it, there it is. There's that voice and mm -hmm. noticing well, what's that. I don't know what, what's it trying to pull out of me for one, but like the kindness and the self-compassion is just then talking back to yourself or your inner critic or whatever you want to call it that I'm not going to judge or criticize myself based on a comparison that number one, it's, it's not true because you don't really know that to even be factual or true. It, it's that is your perception of what's going yes. on in someone yes. else's life. It's you yeah. could be way off, way off the handle. And the compassion is just being like, okay, you know, I use my name. Okay, Jamie, you're being a little hard on yourself. You have no idea if that's true for them. And you're, you're kind of just avoiding, you know, you're being hard on yourself, but you're avoiding something in you by comparison, you know, and a lot of times it's, and this is why it's easy for them and it's hard for me. And just, just kind of notice that and have that kindness. And it's, it's, it's a lot about doing some of that inner child work and that inner parent being your own inner parent. And okay. If your child, speaking of you, your inner child, little you were to say those things, how would you, as an adult, as your parent to that old inner child, how would you talk to yourself? You would be kind, okay. passionate back, like, hey, you know, just if it's the simple, you're doing great. You're doing the best you can. And it's these yeah. little things that they make a big difference. They're just. Oh, they make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Stop. Take it to Being your that best friend. Yep. Yeah. All right. like hey guess what i don't need to talk to myself this way and when mm -hmm. i talk to myself this way what what is it creating inside of me like is this creating mm -hmm. something that's helping me or hurting me in those mm -hmm. i think just it's that starting that conversation with yourself that that is that kind, it's a kind conversation, having that compassion. It it's like, why, why we're grown women? Why do we sit there and berate ourselves? Like, what for? You know, yeah. why? Because of our, you know, our, those beliefs that we have of what other people believe of us. And then we bring them in ourselves, you know, and, and it is, it's starting to work through that. You know, it's, as yeah. we were talking about before, it's that self-study and it's that yeah. self-study with compassion and, mm -hmm. and just taking those little tiny steps to, to start to work and release it, release it, you know, through intellectually, maybe, maybe you're thinking about it, maybe you're journaling about it. Right. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to the same emotion thing. Like it, these thoughts, these these judgments, the more we stick on them, the more we keep repeating them, the more they get ingrained and the more they become patterns, the more they get stuck in our bodies. And so when we're able to catch ourselves, we're able to start reframing how we're talking to ourselves, how we're thinking, we're able to notice, okay, I can start to move and release this from my body. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it is, it, 
and and like you say like it's always with compassion we're not judging ourselves for having it because we are human this happens it is part of our human nature right mm -hmm. but it, as you say is it true probably not because you know and no one is perfect right. and and we shouldn't put ourselves to that standard either like we should celebrate for what we have done we should celebrate you know these wins and yeah there's going to be difficult days but hey you made it through that day yeah you're yeah. here yeah and i think too you know if, if people are really feeling this this constant chronic stress and burnout it's just you know why not have a conversation an ongoing conversation with yourself that's just curious and it's just noticing you know what this situation is making me feel this way and then where am I feeling it in my body oh it's kind of you know it's causing this or it's bringing this up and just really kind of just be curious not not critical and not just just kind of oh just notice things and I think the more that you can just have that inner dialogue it is that reconnecting to yourself and just mm -hmm. it brings you kind of home <laughs> it truly does yes. if that makes sense to anyone it's that bringing you back home and kind of restoring peace and knowing in the moment like okay i'm starting to feel these things and i know that there's things i can do to calm myself i can take a step back you know i can i can breathe i can notice where i'm feeling it and work on okay what can i do to you know start to work through this feeling is there you know what do i what do i need and that right there is having compassion and kindness for yourself what oh, do i need okay. what do i need so and class, this has been an amazing conversation i already I, like just conversations like this i just i end up feeling so empowered to just you know it's like we this is it's not new stuff but I don't think anybody is ever going to, I mean, life is a journey and we have to have these reminders and these practices just in our minds all the time. And because we do, we all leave these full lives and it's easy to stray from that. And I love any conversation that brings me back to think about, okay, what am I doing to take care of me? How can I connect with myself? And it, it, it's restorative. <laughs> I feel it is. <laughs> yeah it is it so is it so is yes yes I totally agree with you now this has been a great conversation um I, it's funny you, you when you were saying that I had a recent recently had a conversation with um, a client and you know we've been working a lot on this and um she was like you know I finally realized that living is is feeling hmm. um and she was like, so what's the point of living if we don't feel, you know? And so it was just like this, this realization that she was kind of talking through with herself. And, and I was like, you know, and I obviously like we're, we were working with it. Like I understand, you know, all these things, but then I also kind of started internalizing that too. Like I hadn't really heard, you know, heard it in those words, like living is feeling. Yeah, it is, you know, of course it is. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's constantly just like, returning to that and allowing that and exploring it with compassion um and you know just just celebrating all those little moments the good moments the bad moments and just allowing yourself to feel them and connect with them because yeah. that is that's the beauty that's the beauty of life and you know the more we're able to do that the more we're able to meet ourselves with compassion to be that best friend that adult um and and the more we're able to love ourselves little by little um yeah. which Great. is is what it you know what we need to do absolutely and i think that is a fabulous way to end and this is with like a, a prompt it could be a journal prompt a, but it is a question to ask yourself because we have to ask ourselves questions and the question is you know what emotions or feelings am i running from yeah you know, right there and in in how can i start to feel them because it's okay like we don't i mean that's part of life and it's it's beauty the good ones the bad ones just the mediocre ones how can i start to feel them and just be with them right that's our yep. that's our journal prompt for everybody there's something to definitely think definitely and let us know let us know how it goes for you 
<laughs> Absolutely. I will put website, Instagram, all your good stuff um, in the show notes, most definitely. And thanks thank so much you. for your time. I appreciate it, Tess. Oh, thank you, Jamie. This has been really, really fun. Thank you so much for listening to Authentically Raw. I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email, jamie at jamiebarris.com and let me know what episodes resonate with you and why. Are you a people pleaser? If so, I need your help. Please, I'm writing a book about people pleasing titled The People Pleaser's Guide to Pissing People Off to improve your relationships, especially the one you have with yourself. And I'm looking for personal stories of how people pleasing has impacted your life or suck the life out of you. Maybe people pleasing has held you back, caused you to feel resent, regret, anger, powerlessness, or just plain exhaustion. Let me know how it's impacted your life. Who knows, maybe your story will inspire my writing and grace the pages in some shape or form in this handy dandy little guide. Also, if you enjoy the authentically raw content, please support the show by following and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Simply scroll down through the episodes and you will see where to do so. Want to learn more about life coaching? Head over to my website, jamiebarris.com and check it out. You can also follow me on social media at Jamie Barris for lots of inspiration and empowerment. One last thing, I'm rooting for you. Be real, be raw, be authentic.